Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be building the city of Delta Coast. My name is Josh and this is more or less the first time I've ever recorded myself uh, playing City Skylines. My plan is to build a city, record it, uh, upload the content to YouTube, and uh, share my experience with you all. So first things first is I'm actually going to update the city name to Delta Coast. Awesome. The reason I've chosen this name is if we actually zoom out and look at the whole map, it's quite an expansive area surrounded by water. There's a lot of coastal elements here. And primarily there's this large river delta feature that I think we wanna highlight in our build. So I'm gonna go with that name and uh, see what happens from there. So just a few notes, uh, I'm playing on a map downloaded from the Steam Workshop. It's called Musi Sobo. Um, so this does not come with the vanilla game. It's pretty easy to download content on the Steam Workshop. Uh, so if that's something that you'd like to do as well, you can do that. I'm playing primarily uh, a vanilla game with most of the major DLCs. I'll start to sprinkle those into my build and talk about them as they become relevant. But for the most part, uh, these DLCs will allow us to build things like city parks, zoos, amusement parks, uh, our various industry areas, our campus, and in the future when it comes out, uh, a sprawling airport, which I'm really excited for. My main goal here is to have fun, uh, see how it goes, uh, you know, recording myself, uh, since that's definitely new for me. I basically want to build everything that can be built in terms of all of the different uh, main areas that I just mentioned from the DLCs um, and try to build something that occupies a large majority of this map. I'm going to be building things incrementally and uh, uploading episodes that kind of detail one area, um, either building it net new or uh, detailing it or um, you know fixing some issues within the city. So I'm going to try to break things up uh, in a modular way so that you can follow and uh, look into different episodes that may interest you. Um, I will be explaining my reasoning behind different choices I make so that my uh, videos are friendly to those learning the game. I don't expect that you have previous experience with this game, so without diving too, too deep, I am going to be explaining things as I build. So first things first, um, I'm going to be pointing out kind of what my thoughts are. You know, we have this starting area. There's a major highway running through uh, the city here, and we have kind of this uh, rotary that's already been built for us. It's located by a river that spills out into that delta area. I think this area right here is going to be a very, very natural place to start building. I think what we're going to do first is uh, take care of this residential demand. We have a lot of it. In the future, as we start to build out, we'll have demand for commercial and industrial as well, so we'll want to consider those needs. But I, I think we can get started building something over here. So again, we're going to be kind of building off of this existing rotary. So let's maybe start placing some roads. I think, first of all, it's going to be very natural to want to build along this river, so I'm going to be considering that. Uh, it probably makes sense to have somewhat of a main road running through this area, um, since a lot of you know local neighborhoods along this pond and along the river can join up with this main road that will link up to that rotary. So I'm just going to see if I can you know place something that makes sense. Let's go for something a little something that cuts through that that area. I think I like that. And now we want to join it up with that rotary. Now I'm using my curved road tool there, or the freeform road tool. I think what I really want to do is build that out first and then meet up with it. I really like that connection. I think we can go with that. So I am going to want to start building out some residential neighborhoods. Um, I am going to be using a fairly basic grid. Um, I think it makes sense. It's easy to develop. It's pretty predictable. Uh, all of the YouTubers I watch and learn from start with grids. So I think it makes sense. So I'm going to have a kind of predetermined grid size. I'm using this benchmark right here as kind of the basis for the grid. I'm going to go two 
notches ahead of it and then take it out um, two full notches or two full milestones. I don't exactly know how many units that is, but I believe it's uh, 20 over here. So that grid makes sense to me. Uh, I am using two lane gravel roads. Uh, it's more of a gray gravel due to the uh, lighting settings I'm using on this map, but just know that that's gravel. In the future, we'll upgrade these roads to kind of this style paved road, and we'll also be upgrading the paved road right here into a larger road that can handle more traffic. The reason I'm using the uh, you know smaller road sizes right now is to save money. We simply don't need anything too crazy just yet. So let's see if we can continue our grid just a bit. I think I'm going to build out you know a couple blocks. That'll be the start of our residential neighborhood. Now, I do also want to consider uh, our industrial demand that we will need in the future. The reason I'm considering that right now is because I do know that we're going to have to figure out uh, water and sewage and electricity. Those needs typically go in an industrial area, so I think I might build out a little bit of an industrial area right now. I'm building it close to this rotary because the industrial zones generate a lot of traffic. Uh, and having that close to the highway is good for your neighborhood. So, I'm gonna try to link that up in a natural way. I don't know if I can exactly, so I'm going to restructure that quickly. That looks nice. So in this area, I can take care of a couple needs that I'm gonna have. The first one is power. We absolutely need power for our city. Uh, just a quick note, I am using the electric roads mod. So if I actually start the game, you'll see that the power area from this power plant will actually start spreading out to the roads. That means I don't have to run power lines every which way. So if I start to zone over here, I'm gonna get power automatically. We want that. So next I'm going to handle, um, oh, interesting. It looks like this starting area comes with water already set up for us. It doesn't look like that's the case for the rest of the city, but we already have water here. I think I actually want to delete that. Um, I don't know that I love that. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and delete that just because I usually like to run the water underneath uh, our roads and um, this will kind of interfere with that. So I'm going to quickly go through and delete this. Okay, so we're back. That took a little bit of work to delete those, but now we have a city without any water pipes. I really wanted to delete those for two reasons. I, I feel kind of cheap using existing infrastructure, so I want to make sure that any water pipes we take advantage of are ones that we place ourselves. And then second, I really just didn't like the look of that grid. It's not what we're going to do for the rest of our city, so uh, I don't see a good reason to keep it. So our needs are going to consist of sewage, which we can actually build inland. Uh, this asset, which is the Inland Water Treatment Plant, comes with the Green Cities DLC. So the alternative would have been uh, dumping water, uh, you know, dirty sewage water into our rivers, which we don't want to do. I think I'd rather pollute the ground area over in this industry area as opposed to dumping, you know, sewage. Um, just a quick note, if you see that these icons hovering over buildings, it means that there's a need we need to take care of. In this case, you know, we have a building that deals with water infrastructure and we don't actually have a water pipe connected to it. So uh, let's do that. This uh, area over here in the top right where you just saw that flashing icon, that is the watch it mod. And that helps me uh, understand at a city level 
what the different needs are. So, you know, if there's a large fire or if there's something that we're not thinking about, it will tell us and we'll be able to take care of it uh, fairly quickly. So I now have water coverage in my industry and residential area. This little gap in coverage is fine because it's directly on a road. We're not actually going to be zoning uh, in that area. So, you know, what matters is that the gridded areas are uh, are covered by water. Uh, so we have sewage taken care of, but we do not have any uh, water that we're gathering. I think what we want to do is uh, actually draw some water from the river so we can build a uh, water pump right over there. We'll want to connect that up to our uh, existing water network. So now we have water in and sewage out. And we'll also need to run some power over to that area. Now, because it's not connected by a road, I think for now we'll just connect it with power poles. So we have everything we need to handle, you know, basic needs. Before I start simming, I'm going to actually zone a large chunk of this residential so that we can actually start building houses. And I do know, since this is going to be our main street, I do know that we want to place commercial alongside it. Um, that, you know, the main street's going to be busy. It's going to have a lot of car and pedestrian traffic. So that's a pretty realistic spot for some commercial. Those are going to be your shops, your restaurants, um, anywhere people, you know, go to actually buy things or spend their money. And uh, similarly, we can do that over here and go ahead and zone this industrial area with uh, Orange Industry, which is where our factories will uh, spin up. So I've done a lot of talking. I think what we're going to do now is let the game run so you can see our city start to develop. We are losing money. You know, we're losing $590 or uh, units per week. We definitely want that number to go down. So instead of losing money, we, we gain some. Uh, our income primarily comes from taxing uh, our uh, residences, our commercial areas, our industrial areas. So the more uh, that develops over here, the more money that we will make. And to anticipate some further need, let's just go ahead and build out some more of our residences. We'll add water pipes. And just go ahead and zone it. We have a pretty high demand for residential, so we can expect that folks will want to move in over there. I really like these assets that came with the map. Uh, it was a custom map theme, uh, which you can sometimes opt into if you have a custom map. So I really like what we're seeing here. And since some folks are moving in, we do have an increased demand for commercial. So you're seeing some shops and such pop up over here, which is really great. Similarly, over here in our small industry area, we're starting to get some factories. Now, we are still losing quite a bit of money. One thing I can do, I believe, is go into the budget tab and start to decrease the amount of money we're paying for our city services. My logic is we're not actually using uh, all of the water available to us. Um, you know, we're way under utilizing it so we can actually crank that budget down. That will save us some money over time. Similarly, we can do the same with electricity. And I think I'll go back to simming some more. And we have a great big stream of cars uh, actually moving into the city, which is really great. They're coming through the rotary from the highway connection, that big interchange, and starting to move in. Awesome, so now we're actually starting to make some money. So we have the ability to, you know, build some roads and infrastructure as we need it. So I'm not too concerned about our ability to expand at this point. 
we are starting to see a large uptick in industry. I see that all of that is pretty much zoned, so I'm gonna just go ahead and create some more of that. I think I can come over here a little bit. I don't wanna go too far. Now that I think about it, I think we actually want to maybe do some sort of a curve over here. Awesome. So our city grew so well that we reached our first population milestone of 440. We are now at Little Hamlet. Really cool. We have unlocked a couple things that we need to start thinking about. These are generally referred to as city services. So these are uh, things that we have available to help um, you know, build our city out. But these are also needs that our citizens are going to start uh, requiring. So we need to give some thought to how we're going to handle uh, garbage in our city. Um, healthcare, you know, how do we keep our citizens happy and healthy? And we also want to educate our citizens as well so they can have uh, you know, higher paying jobs that require higher education. So let's actually pause while we take a look at this. You know, we did get a little bit of money from that uh, population milestone and we have some new assets. So the elementary school costs 10,000. Uh, this is going to really help us out. I like to place these right away just because they're so critical. If we don't do this, then uh, we'll have some problems with our education pipeline down the road. And you'll notice that made our citizens really happy. Uh, additionally, you know, the medical clinic is very important. Uh, different things such as pollution, proximity to noxious uses such as factories or noise uh, will make our citizens unhealthy. You'll notice some of these brown homes. Uh, those are citizens that are unhealthy because they're dealing with the uh, noise coming from this main road. The commercial shops generate noise and that affects our citizens negatively. You can see the noise pollution here. This is natural, this is okay, but we combat that with a medical clinic. Uh, I think it makes sense to find an area that we haven't uh, seen development in, it, development in yet. So somewhere like there makes some sense to me. When we start simming, those houses will uh, turn green again, which is good. And then lastly, we absolutely need to think about how we handle garbage. So. Uh, we'll definitely put that in our industry area, which we're building out now. So I'll turn that game back on, and we'll just aim to put that landfill site in this area. I'm really particular about, you know, the shape of how the water pipes develop. So, you know, you might see me refactoring that from time to time. That looks good. And I think we can place our landfill right around here. That way it has good road access to the main road and it can start picking up trash from our citizens. Um, you can see, you know, those purple trucks coming out of that landfill site. They're actually gonna start gathering some garbage. The landfill is not a permanent solution, it will have you know it has a finite capacity it will get to a point where it's full uh, as we level up and unlock more assets we will start to actually process the garbage uh, which is a big consideration so let's fill in our industry that we've been talking about for a little while i think we can you know fill in some of this as well and I'm stopping right about here with my commercial because I don't want to get too close to this rotary. You know, I may want some larger roads coming out of it in the future. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do to it. Also, it's probably pretty uncommon to see, you know, uh, foot traffic and, and commercial activity this close to a rotary. So I think cutting it off there makes some sense. So we'll do that. Let's see how this develops. Okay, I'm gonna slow us down. We're in a really good spot. We are making money. 
we have a decent bank balance and we have some more demand for residential and commercial. So now is probably a good time to start to maybe build a little bit closer to the shore uh, and kind of backfill in this area and connect it up. Right now, these are two distinct neighborhoods and we want to actually bring them a little bit closer together. And you can see that some of our factories actually have issues now where there are not enough workers. So I know that taking care of some of that residential demand and linking these neighborhoods up will help remedy that situation. Um, also, I do see this little warning right here. Our electricity is getting a little bit close to our, our capacity. So let's actually bump up our budget now that we're in a good spot. Especially in the beginning of the game, you'll see me start to tweak that uh, budget uh, pretty frequently, and that's just to make sure we are spending our money wisely. So let's work on connecting these uh, different roads up. I think what I want to do is my grid on take that out to there and make a good connection there awesome so that I think makes sense and I think we'll want to just take this road out uh, as far as it'll let us so you know, we definitely want to continue to be thoughtful to our grid size. I do need to remind myself uh, how how long that is. So I think what it is is a cost of 240 is where we want to go. So I know that right there is where we want to meet up. That looks nice as well. Delete that. And... Yeah, I like that right there. Let's stop there for now, not get too ahead of ourselves. I do want to take care of that demand pretty quickly because we need a lot of residential right now. We're starting to see not enough workers in our commercial shops. So, yeah, let's take care of that. Okay. And let's stick with our development pattern of putting commercial alongside, you know, our main street. And for the most part, the rest will be residential. Now, I do want to give some thought to the pollution that's coming from our dirty industry area. I definitely don't want to put residential anywhere close to that. So I am going to actually create a buffer with our commercial zoning right there. That will help us, you know, really avoid uh, building residential in polluted areas. We can probably relocate some of the power lines just to get them away. Okay, that looks good. Now we can go back to zoning our residential. Some of these homes might be a little bit close, but I think that buffer will really help. And again, that medical facility that we placed earlier will help remedy some of the sickness that we see in our citizens. Okay, since we're in a good spot with our budget, I think I'm just going to continue to uh, build out the neighborhood. don't like that. It's kind of ugly. Let's get rid of that for now. All right. So again, using that cost of 240. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, that's interesting. I think maybe because we are snapping to a bunch of different things. Huh. Let's do this then. That's the length we want. Okay. We have now reached Worthy Village with a population of 900. This is another milestone. 
and we have a lot of other things we want to think about. Uh, we will definitely get into districts and policies and some of the uh, different uh, considerations that those introduce that will essentially allow us to break up our neighborhoods into uh, distinct units that have different personalities, different restrictions and privileges, uh, different things that will help our city grow and kind of be unique. Uh, going along with that, we have some uh, specializations for residential and commercial. You know, we can make a district that has self-sufficient residences and organic and local produce. That might be cool. Uh, we can limit, you know, water and power usage. And we now get to think about our police station and fire uh, house. Uh, just like our last upgrade, these are services that our city will need. Uh, you know, we can't really get away without building a firehouse. We will now start to get fires that a firehouse will have to put out. So we definitely want to uh, place those buildings right away. So maybe they make sense actually over in this part of town where we have, you know, some of our industry, some of our louder commercial uses, good uh, main street access. So I think what I'll do is finish out this road real quick and place some of those buildings. I think that's a nice connection. And if we go right to there, that will get us connected up with that grid. I could take it one more out, uh, but I don't exactly know what I'm doing over here just yet. So maybe we'll avoid doing that for now. So let's look at our firehouse. If we place it here, we'll have good road access for, uh, you know, most of our neighborhood. So I think this would be a good spot for it. Right off of main road, not directly on it. You know, we don't want uh, traffic from that asset to load onto the main road, but I think right here is fine. That will also help some of these buildings level up, which is a good thing. Similarly, we don't have any police coverage. I think it's okay to have this in a more residential area. I am gonna take down some houses for it, um, but right here, I think makes sense. Centrally located, uh, yeah, that should, that should be helpful. So we are still seeing a uh, worker shortage. Uh, that's okay. We'll will start to, you know, fill in this area. And I think that will go down with time. And we had a building level up. That's great. You know, that's due to us placing a lot of those valuable city services in this area. The citizens really like that. Uh, and that helps the buildings become more valuable and level up. So maybe let's, like I mentioned, build this out a little bit further. I, I know we're going to have a road kind of fronting this river, so I think it makes sense for this road to, you know, continue out and maybe even meet up with it. So if we maybe build that road now, then we'll have a good idea of where our neighborhood kind of, you know, ends. Let's actually do this. Okay, so now I'm going to have the existing neighborhoods meet up with it. I think that looks great. And I do want this to be a nice, smooth 90 degree connection, so we'll just do that to tee it off. And I think what I want to do is maybe break away from this uh, curvature that we've introduced and just go back to a, a straight grid right there, just to separate the blocks a little bit. Um, maybe if we do something along here, even though it's not consistent with the rest of our grid, that's totally okay. Again, making some nice connections to break it up. I think that looks okay. Might not be the prettiest, but these are reasonable blocks. And I think right here we can get away with, uh, you know, building something that cuts through right there just to break up that block. 
When we have access to paths, we are definitely going to uh, build some paths, some pedestrian and bicycle paths through this area. Now let's take care of our water infrastructure. Okay, so I do think I want to turn the rain off. I don't know that I really love that. Let's see. I think I'm turning off dynamic weather. I don't really like dealing with rain or fog or anything like that. It makes it harder to, to look at the game for, for our viewers. So I think we're going to disable that. All right. Let's, uh, let's go back to zoning out some residences. Although, one thing I do want to consider is where our commercial is going to be. So we did decide, you know, this makes sense as a nice pocket of commercial to separate our industry area. But I also do think that some centrally located spot like this might be a good location for some commercial to live. We don't need to go crazy with it, but... Um, you know, we don't want our, our folks in our neighborhood to walk all the way to Main Street for commercial activity. These can be small little, uh, you know, shops that might exist in a neighborhood. So I think that would be pretty realistic. And I'm going to fill in the rest with residential. And we also want to place residences along the shore as well. So let's fill in these blocks over here. Now, I think we want to take a similar approach with commercial. We probably want some activity over here, but not uh, much, not a ton. So we'll stick with mostly residential with a few, uh, you know, pockets of commercial activity. We'll extend that road out in the future. I don't exactly know what we're going to do over here just yet, but uh, that's kind of to let us know that we want to expand and follow the shoreline. Let's let this sim for a bit and see what happens. One thing I do want to check out is our junctions. So it's very important to me that we don't have unnecessary um, lights and, and signal intersections, signalized intersections. That slows traffic down and most of the time they're unnecessary. So for now, we actually don't have any sort of traffic management at all. That's okay. Uh, now might actually be an appropriate time to upgrade our roads, at least this main road, and upgrade it into a collector. Uh, before we do that, I do see we're having power issues. That probably means that our budget is a little bit too low. We can increase that to 100. And you know what? I don't think that's going to cut it. We probably want to... Uh, okay, I take that back. 40 megawatts will do just fine for now. Doesn't look like we have any remaining issues. So. We'll keep our budget where it is. That seems fine. Back to the road I was describing. You know, we do want to upgrade this main road. Right now it's just uh, one lane. We want to make that two lane. This is what's called a collector because the local roads, uh, the one lane roads will kind of uh, all uh, use the collector as their main throughway to get throughout the city. Uh, and you know, the. We want these collector roads to be centrally located uh, so that our local roads can access them and uh, take advantage of them for their larger trips. So it did unfortunately ruin a little bit of our zoning. I'm going to pause the game and deal with that. That's one of the things I dislike about doing that upgrade. Uh, so let's just revisit some of that.
okay. I think that is all properly zoned now. Unfortunately, a lot of buildings along the road got demolished. They'll spring back up. Now we uh, want to think about traffic management again. You know, before we didn't really have any intersections uh, between uh, non-local roads, and now we have local roads meeting up with a collector. So uh, I usually only have uh, intersections between major roadways. So in the case of a local road meeting up with a collector, we'll just have a stop sign. We want to prioritize this movement here and then make sure that these cars are stopping before they hit the collector. So let's go ahead and change all of those. We'll have to do this from time to time. Uh, it helps, you know, manage traffic flow, and I think it's a pretty reasonable thing to do. So that's why I went ahead and did that. So we are in a spot where our city is still growing pretty rapidly. Uh, we're actually not too far away from our next population milestone. I think we will end after we reach this milestone, just because we've done quite a bit today, and I don't want to have these episodes drag on. So maybe we can just simulate and see if we reach that milestone. Okay, and just like that, we are there. We have a whole mess load of things that we now want to consider. A lot of policies. We'll probably get into our districts uh, in the next episode. Uh, we can now place parks and plazas. We'll definitely want to think about that. Uh, you know, a lot of different uh, paths and roadway options, canals, which I've never used myself, different fences, different park assets, uh, you know, new options for schooling. High school is a new education option that comes after elementary schools. Uh, you know, we have a bunch of different options for parks, garbage collection, warehousing, and, and stuff like that. So we have a lot that we can explore in the next episode. I think we will end here today just because we're in a good spot. You know, we uh, have a decent bank balance and our budget is balanced pretty effectively. So in the next episode, we will start to talk about and take care of some of those new needs that we have. Uh, but I, I think this is a good spot to end. So thank you for watching. Uh, again, this is Delta Coast episode one, and uh, I hope to see you in the next episode. Thanks.